Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I just I think that uh, I it, it's funny because I went to the set visit and they talked about all of this behind the scenes stuff and and this lore they had worked out and everything. And then um, and then they were making a big deal out of it in the lead up to the movie in the Area 51 and the aliens and robot zombies and all that. And then the movie came out and the first time I watched it, that stuff was way less like in the forefront than I was expecting. Um, and like there were elements of it. There it was clear that it like influenced what happened, but it wasn't until like the second watch and the third watch that I started picking out like it's almost better if you aren't aware of that stuff or aren't expecting it because all of the little teases are, are there um, from, you know, the UFOs in the beginning um, taking off at the very, very start. And then, you know, the fact that he's from area 51 and the blue, you know, the blue blood and the, the robot zombies and the, uh, um, I don't even want to use the words, the, the, the time loop theories <laughs> that um, are just the ones that I wasn't expecting. Um, and, uh, um, I don't know. There's just, there, there has slowly, but also like, it wasn't an immediate after the movie dropped, but over the last, you know, um, 24 hours or whatever, which I guess maybe is since the movie dropped. Cause I'm thinking it, the, the, the theatrical release kind of extended the timeline a little yeah. bit, but, um, there has been a, a very quick, um, people are digging into it and finding visual parallels and, and a lot of the stuff that people really got, you know, loved chewing on with his DC movies. But now it's, it's not only with a brand new franchise, but it's also a franchise that like, there's no source material to go look at and say, Oh, they're going to take from final crisis here. And this is what you need to know about dark side. Like, no, there's none of that. Um, and, uh, yet he, yet there's, there's that same kind of visual metaphor and stuff at play, which almost means that like the speculation is boundless as a result, instead of like focusing on, well, here's how Batman did it in the comics. It's like, well, what is a it's an alien zombie? I, <laughs> like, what do you do with it? Anything, I guess. Um, and that's, that's really, uh, really cool. Especially knowing that like this animated series is coming and you know, this is just the start of whatever this universe turns into. Got now, piggybacking off of what Steven said, because I still have only seen it the one time because I saw it in theaters last Saturday and just with everything going on, I I have not had the opportunity to watch it on Netflix. Uh, probably we'll try to do that tonight after, you know, sign, signing off of your guys stream. But the ability to have something fresh, have something new and also, let's just be frank here to have a corporate partner like Netflix who is leaning into it and no, and you're looking at them, looking at us going, oh, we have you now. And yet, and, and wanting to leverage that is really kind of fun. Like I still need to go and watch that 30 minute making of special that they've put on netflix that i want to i want to delve into because i love watching behind the scene making of features i think that's a that's a pet thing that i do it's like why i love physical media so much because i love you know <laughs> watching the making of documentaries and that kind of thing and then the art book that comes out uh in a in a couple of weeks i can't wait to actually like really like delve into that and and see what little tidbits and things are in there and the army of thieves movie with Dieter because Dieter's up there like in my top three of like all-time favorite characters from army of the dead <laughs> so to think and my wife loved Dieter too and i was like yeah you're getting a whole movie with just him you know it's and, and that kind of stuff you know but you the easter eggs that zach has talked about that steven you pointed out didn't get a lot of play in the movie. It's there. It's subtle. It's, it's, it's impressions. It's, it's, you know, you know, far, you know, wars and rumors of wars kind of thing going on in the movie, but it's all there. So it can be played with later. If, you know, if they so desire and like, I, but I'm also here for like the subtle things or not so subtle things like, 
the whole safe being named after Wagner operas. And then the fact that when Dieter sees the freaking safe, it starts playing music from that opera. And I'm <laughs> losing my shit here because I'm like, I know that. Oh, and by the way, that's from Excalibur. They used it all in Excalibur. This is such a like Zack Snyder fan movement for me. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> losing my mind, <laughs> getting excited about this movie and getting these fresh new characters and Steven to a point that you made because it's not because it's an original work being able to watch it and go, I don't have a flipping clue what's going to happen beyond some expectations I have just based on the genre itself. Like if everyone but one or two people didn't die by the end of this movie, I would have been disappointed because I have an expectation from the genre that it's like, no, I need everyone to die by the end of this movie. Like it should not be a happy ending, you know, you know, overall, because that's not how a zombie movie ends. And so it, the ending in some ways was expected, but even with the, even with the elements of the movie that I go, well, yeah, that's the way I thought the movie should have ended. It still left me with questions. And, and when Tim and I did our review for Squawkast movies, I remember thinking, you know, Martin was there to collect a sample for the U.S. military. And I'm still thinking about the fact that after Kate, you know, you know, pop Scott between the eyes that military helicopter comes to pick her up you've got an infected body right there <laughs> yeah he's dead but can they salvage the material like is that is that sequel material right there beyond the fact that van's in an airplane on his way to mexico city and he's bit like i i'm seeing where story branches can go but the movie, except for like the van one, the movie didn't like spell it out for me. It was just there for me to go. Hmm. And think yeah. about where could a sequel go from here? Well, when like you talk about like franchise starters also, and you look at everyone always looks at Iron Man where I think that was people think that a lot more and that was planned. Whereas I think a lot of it was just kind of Easter eggs to Marvel stuff that later on, they they paid off less so than like universe planning not to discredit it iron man is a great movie but um i think that uh, you end up with stuff like the dark universe where it they they collapse early on under their own weight because they um they that first movie out the gate kind of has the burden of building a universe and it's very clear that a universe exists here we know they've talked about it but if you watch this movie you don't go in thinking like you know, you don't have like, oh, well, that's clearly, you know, that's what the sequel's about. And like, it's even hard to, it's not hard to imagine the existence of a sequel, but this could be the only movie that ever exists. And people aren't going to say like, oh, it is clearly we missed out on, like it, it stands alone, truly stands alone mm -hmm. in a way that most franchise starters totally fail to. And that's um, just really exciting to to see for once someone commit to a, um, like, yes, there's Easter eggs. Yes, there's opportunity to do more, but those will be illuminated more with future storytelling. Not, it's not like this holds it up as, you know, guess what you're going to find out about this. Like even the, like I, I knew that the UFOs were in that opening scene, um, before I ever saw the movie and I've seen it. I three times, I guess three times I've had it on like in the background one more time. Um, and still have not have yet to see. Well, I've watched the opening sequence itself, you know, five times total, probably. Um, and I, I, I haven't I haven't seen them. So like that's the kind of like it's all there, but you know, it's it's worth the fine tooth comb that people are gonna give it until um whatever comes next happens. Zach? Uh... Yeah, because people have been like talking about like the robot zombies and I I saw the blue glowing, but I also thought that was like the the virus glowing stuff that you know, like the baby zombie had and like the stuff that flew out of Zeus's head. And so like, I'm still wondering like, okay, well, is that robot or is that the blue glow? Like, like I, I saw the blue glowing eyes and stuff, but I just, I didn't think that was the robot stuff. I thought that was just the, whatever this 
alien question mark virus is that starts the zombie apocalypse. Because once again, the movie doesn't hang a lantern on the stuff and explain it to you and say, exposition guy, this is how that this is what this is. It just puts it there for you visually. And you're sitting there going, it, it is, it, is that a, or is that B? I don't know because I know things and, once again, it, it's kind of like being a super fan. It would almost have been more fun to go into this movie knowing Jack and just kind of experience it because then I wouldn't be trying to reconcile the movie with any kind of preconceived notions or preconceived expectations. I would just be watching a movie and going WTF. Yeah. And, Zach and, there, and I feel like there's something that's lost. I think I think there's a certain amount, especially for those of us who like podcast or YouTube or like super fan it up. I think so much gets lost from the we we rob ourselves of just having the WTF moments. And sometimes those are the most fun to have in a movie cause when you have no idea what just happened. Yeah, it was totally like that. And um, for your point, I was saying that Zach. Um, well, he didn't say this exactly, but he, uh, upon talking about the zombie penis, he said that, well, we didn't want to have everything in the first movie and, you know, um, kind of uh, wanted the average audience to enjoy and not think about everything too deeply and all that, right? So, um, based on that, I think Zack did that on purpose. He didn't want to overstuff this with universe building um materials like that and ufos aliens and there's this history with this character and all that into the first movie right so now that the people are into this um world he can explore that further um making prequels and uh, you know in the sequel i'll have to say that i'm more excited about the animated prequel uh than the sequel <laughs> because that's basically that has to do with the origin of the you know zombie virus and the alien stuff right that's more interesting to me uh, even though it's animated and not live action i wish it was but um it, it, that answers a lot of questions so that's that's very interesting to me john oh you're, you're muted. muted unmute yourself okay now you um, okay. so I, I love zombies. Okay, on the eat button. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I love zombies. Okay, so I, I was so excited to see Zach go back into this world because, of course, I'm sad that Justice League Two and Three isn't guaranteed. We don't know if it's ever going to happen. But if I was to pick one genre for him to jump back into, it would be zombies. Uh, I love The Walking Dead. I love World War Z, Zombieland, Shaun of the Dead, George Romero's zombie movies. Love them so much. And this movie felt like a blend of all of those put together through the eyes of Zack Snyder, with his own spin, with his own kind of uniqueness brought into it, his visionary style, but also his idea of maybe aliens, which George Romero also touched on as well, touched on aliens, radiation, and uh, maybe them evolving. But Zack is doing this now through his eyes, which is awesome. And I agree with Stephen where this could be a standalone movie and we get nothing more from it. And I think it would work like that if it was just a one-off, but I'm so happy that we're getting more, totally. get more. The world building is ridiculous with this movie. And even though most of these characters don't survive, and we don't know if, if, if the characters that did survive will make it in a sequel. I don't know if they will, but it added something to it. Even though we're attached to these characters, even though mostly every one of them died, we're still in for this world because we want to see how this evolves. Why is there aliens, or what is that exactly? Why is there, uh, why is the baby blue? Why is there some of them with glowing eyes? Why is there one of them looks like a robot? You know, stuff like that. Why is the shambler, how would the shamblers created if Zeus? fights as a, somebody and they turn into an alpha, then how come Shamblers became something even more? I love that shot where the little girl, it's in the opening uh, credits, the little girl is bending down as if to get a teddy bear or something on the ground, and the camera sits there, and the, the zombies are just walking, the old style kind of George Romero zombies. I love that shot so much, kind of a throwback. And to see Zach also, Zach has talked very positively about The Walking Dead, which has been around for the last 11 years, my favorite show personally, and uh, to see him and they use their ideas, but bring them in a, in a different way. Like Garrett Dillahunt is in Fear of the Walking Dead, which is a spinoff of the main show, for him to be brought in. And he also brought in Lauren Cohen from, uh, into Batman v Superman, to be Marta, Jeffrey Morgan, stuff like that. I think it's just pretty cool. And he shows a bit of respect to the genre of zombies, but also doing his own thing. 
And I think Dave Batista gave a very emotional performance in this, and he's really crafting himself as an actor. He's not just a movie star right now, you know. I think he's he's developing big time. But uh, I'm more excited to see where Zach brings this world right now because it's a guarantee, and and the Snyderverse isn't the guarantee. So I'm excited because I know Army of the Dead Two will probably happen. There's a prequel happening. There's an animated movie happening or show. So uh, yeah, I'm all for it, and uh, I love this movie so much. I like how we can nitpick and we can we can we can pick a part. Maybe this part doesn't make sense, or that character we could tell was going to be the the villain, Eric Dillahunt's character, and stuff like that. But it was just so much of a, of a thrill ride, and then you can you can theorize with, with your friends, and that's the best part about it. I think it's just here talking with you guys about it, and on Twitter and Instagram, it's just it, it's good. I I think it's uh, it's a great experience to have with with, with your friends. Yeah, totally. And uh, on my first viewing, I didn't catch all the theories uh, when I was watching it. Um, I did catch the reference, uh, references to his old movies, though. Like, I felt so many scenes and, uh, you know, shots were similar to either BVS or Zack Snyder's Justice League or, you know, uh, Watchmen or Sucker Punch. And that was amazing to watch. And um, it it's so it's so cool to know that one person um directed this wrote this and he shot this and he's um adding in uh stuff from his previous movies that's like the artist right <laughs> like what can well he's like self-referential yeah. at this point like he's le- like you've got the um <clears throat> michael cassidy getting killed in the in the desert in the first 15 minutes which um i mentioned to him last night on uh on Dave's uh, film junkie stream. And, uh, and he like was aware, uh, you know, it was not something that had, had escaped him. Um, you got Alison Crow and Richard cheese in the opening song. Um, that elevator song gag is in Dawn of the dead. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like you've got all these things that are, um, you got, Zeus you got has Tig. a red cape and he wears a black mask that goes oh. down, you know, to his and nose. Tig even has that great lines. Was that a zombie with a goddamn cave? <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> It's the line exactly. about you've got Richard Citrone, who has been in every has been a stuntman in his movie since 300 as the head zombie. He killed it. In I, that I think, role. Well, it also I think it was really funny because I think even Man of Steel Answers had a great tweet today. It was like, so who's going to be the guy who comes up with the Zack Snyder bingo card that we're going to have for this movie? Because because yeah. he just listed out all these things like Samantha Wynn being a major character when she's been either a on-screen performer or a stunt double for so many movies. It's like this movie is as a, you know, the Larry Fong Easter egg that we all like, like, like just cackled over it. You know, it's, it's these things that as a Zack Snyder fan, you can watch this movie and go, dude, this was for me. It, yeah. it, and you can and you can have that yeah. moment of like my wife is sitting there she doesn't have a freaking clue and I'm sitting there going <laughs> <laughs> and she, and then later she's like okay explain okay tell me what you want to <laughs> tell me I'm like yes honey <laughs> <laughs> but then but there's someone my wife who just loves zombie movies can watch it and just completely enjoy herself so much so that when we came back home she immediately said do you have Dawn of the Dead I've never seen it. And I popped in Dawn of the Dead for her to watch because that inspired her to go see his other zombie movie. That's the effect this movie yeah. can have. Yeah. That movie is I, I, good. Yeah, it I, is. I, I, it's the first Snyder movie I ever saw, and I, I, I hadn't forgotten how good it was, I guess. But it, it's, never, it's not always part of the conversation because of the super- But um, Dice and I watched it because we recorded a commentary track. And then, like the next day, I watched it again with Snyder's commentary on, it, and then watched all the speaking of special features. Watched all the special features on the on the Blu-ray and everything. Like it's, it's um, it's a very solid, tight movie. Do you yeah, do, do you have I, the Screen I, Factory blue uh, Blu-ray? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I was I, I meant to tell Zach this story, and I got to talk to him, but I was so nervous and happy to talk, see him actually on the stream. But I, the first DVD I ever bought with my own money in 2010 was Dawn of the Dead on DVD. Like, I have it right here. And I love this movie so much. And this is before I knew about Scott. producers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't know about producers, about like, directors, anything like that. I just 
watched movies and I fell in love with it. And that's the moment I fell in love with zombies. A few months later, Walkie Day came on television. I got to see Zombieland as well. And ever since then, I've been just obsessed with zombies. I love zombies so much. Because like, uh, like, for, for someone who, who has their own money at that age to go and actually be able to, be able to buy something, and this is the first thing that you really kind of buy, the first kind of movie you buy, and to pop it on at home and be just uh, crazy about it, especially the baby, the zombie baby and stuff like that. I just found it very fascinating. But to see that come full circle now and make another army of the dead the, the on the dead type movie it was just just amazing and uh, i had so much fun with this movie i've watched it three times already i love breaking it down uh, and it's just i just i think it's a great it's a great kind of ride of a movie where you just sit back and great music great song choice great score the opening sequence i was very emotional or alison gross singing over the, the girl running over to her mother and uh, the zombie song at the end where omari hardwick's character comes out from rises from the ashes of the safe it's just badass and the zombie song plays there by, from the cranberries who are an irish band uh, i thought that was pretty cool i know there's a lot of political bullshit around that song on twitter and stuff i'm not going to talk about here as an irish man i thought it was a very fitting song for the uh, uh scene and uh, i love that that's my favorite scene in the movie actually and um yeah I just, i'm looking forward to see where it goes next and i think that confirms it last night that um for one is was one strange uh, mary harwick will be the next kind of zeus well which is crazy i might yeah. be even an, an evolved uh, more an evolved uh, maybe zeus i don't know yeah he said that he would be a more a much more scarier bruce uh zeus and i'm like how yeah. <laughs> but to be <laughs> fair um zeus wasn't as scary he was kind of he wasn't as aggressive as the other alphas or the other shamblers he was kind of very composed and calm oh my god i loved zeus man i'm like Richard Citroen, the way he performed that character is just so amazing. Even the way he was just standing in one place and looking, it, it just was amazing. It gave me the Batman vibe uh, from BBS and uh, it, was, it's, it was such a cool uh, easter egg to put that mask over him and then he also had a cape. <laughs> so that was that was really cool. But I, I totally loved Zeus and um, he, he played it really well. I love that character. I was amazed. I think what made him scary in his own way is that you could tell that he was thinking yes. and that scares the crap out of you at a, in a zombie movie because it's like, what they can think, you know? Yeah. And, and so like when he puts the well, mask on, the, yeah, exactly. The, the, yeah. Cause he puts the mask on and I'm going to, and I was slow. Cause I was just, I love it. Cause I was just too busy being in the movie that I didn't pick up on it. But then when he's wa uh, even before, um, van fires off the first shot, but when I see him walking down the hall, then like, I love it when something clicks for me, like five seconds before the movie tells you. Yeah. And so when I saw the mask down, I went, headshots oh my god okay that and then and then the first shot happens and the bullet bounces off i'm just like that's brilliant that feels like something like if you've ever played like left for dead or something that feels like you started a new like when they introduce a new zombie or whatever where you're like at the end of a stage and a zombie comes out and you shoot and you hear the ping like i don't think that's a, a type of zombie they have in it that's the type of thing they would do where you're like oh wait what's going on here zombies that are impervious to headshots what do i do what am i supposed <laughs> to do here yeah it's, um, it's crazy yes. that I've never yeah, thought of that, you know, before, before seeing that scene. I was like, yeah, it's so simple. And I've never thought of that before. <laughs> Just put something that covers your head and what are you going to do? And they're even running at you. <laughs> and even I the, know, the, they're the fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, more powerful. Even the, but even, the zombie like, wires made them more talk powerful. About, we talk about fast zombies. It's like, oh my God, they're scary. Well, one of the, like the, the glow stick scene. The zombies are just asleep. That's scary yes. because God, any moment they could turn on. In that, in that scene. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Because at any moment the zombie could just wake up and you're you're fucked. And I, it's just I love that scene so much. Actually, a few episodes ago, Fear of the Walking Dead did something kind of similar, but it was only for a, a quick moment. And I was like, I was annoyed at the episode because I was like, oh, you could have made a whole episode just that without our whole sequence. But I'm glad that Zach had an idea similar and made it into a John Wick type. Uh, silent kind of movie sequence it was just it was really cool. I thought it was, it was awesome. Well, that was, I mean, and that's the scene that really makes you fall in love with Chambers. Like, yes. I, I, my, my wife yeah. was, my wife was watching Samantha Wynn like go down with the ship, and she's just like, 
no, no. Like it, it was a great, once again, the thing this movie does is in very quick order. It makes you root for all of these characters, except Martin, screw him and Cummings. <laughs> You know that that's the one where you just go shoot him in the balls, just, just do it, and it, and it's it's amazing how quickly you are so invested in these characters that even though if you know the zombie genre, you know they've all got to die, it still gutted you every time you lost one of them, mm-hmm. and and that's just a good movie when you go, I cared what happened to these characters, and even though I know they're probably all going to die, it still was like. When Maria gets it, that shocked me. It's like, I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. But when Maria died, I was just like, no. I was and most upset at Zeus getting killed, actually. <laughs> because I loved him <laughs> no, so much. No. Well, did you, did you see on the vodka stream last night when Zach said they talked about when Maria gets killed, they, yes. they thought about having <laughs> her reach hilarious. out. For, um, for Dave, but because her head is wrong, her arms reach the wrong way. <laughs> like, and he was like, you know what? Maybe that's he's like, that's probably pushing it too far. It's like it's dark, it's dark enough. It's comedy though. Not, it would have been that the funny. Clavicle like breaks the surface. Like like if someone twisted Look, your neck full way, splatter, I guess the bone would pop right out. Ooh. Yeah. The, the splatter from the blood as well. There were a lot of funny even, moments even in the movie. Like similar yeah. to that, like the theater um, was pretty, pretty funny. Yeah, apart from that part, I mean, I mean the the natural humor that comes from stuff, you know, that just happens, right? Like Zach said, the arm thing. I think that would have been hilarious in that in that scene. And then there's one more scene where um, the first time we see the queen zombie, right? And um, she, they both take the take Cummings, and then she just runs, right? And oh yeah. <laughs> That was also a funny thing. <laughs> well, it's like because she was a she was like a dancer yeah. or, or something. Yeah, and it was very much like leaving the stage. Yeah. Um, it was, it's, it was she great. Posed like a ballet dancer. Yes, yeah. very much so. Yes. So stuff like that was really uh, you, you know even the the um, Valentine scene where Zach said yesterday right um, we just wanted him to kind of be like a cat you know sit in one place and we should we should just feel um, good about him or something. Even that was funny to me. Like every every other zombie was just running, and he's just there sitting and watching. <laughs> it was cool. You know what was funny when um, when Tig when uh, Scott the police character calls um, Tig's character um, Peters like uh, is it ready and stuff yes. and uh, the chopper and uh, and Tig's like uh, hey I'm just up here getting the tan and yeah I'm yeah. just chilling and stuff. That was pretty funny. Her, her line delivery throughout the entire movie, even just little throwaway lines that were, was pretty good. It added a little bit. And she was in a lot of movies than, than I thought she would be in. Yeah. I thought maybe the pilot, all right, seeing at the start, the end of the sequence and stuff like that. But I think she did a pretty good job for somebody we didn't have anyone to act for. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tig and uh, she she just has this uh, monotone vo- voice and delivery to her jokes. Uh, but their jokes are really funny. So I really <laughs> loved whatever I she said. I hate my life. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm in. You don't want to know? <laughs> it has something to do with a helicopter, right? Probably. I'm in. Thank you. You know. You know what's. Yeah. You know what's uh, <laughs> more. You know what's even funnier be, uh, with that line. Her life actually is shit, because she, she had a, a whole lineup of bad events happen to her in a span of a very, you know, a very uh, small time frame. And she even found that funny. She also had cancer, and then she beat cancer, and all, and she her mom died uh, just before that, and then she went to, uh, she she kind of wanted to get pregnant and all that, and then she lost the baby, and all of that stuff happened in a you know span of a few months or a, a couple of years or something. Um, that was all in the documentary, uh, Tig's documentary, but. That line hit me so hard after that because she actually does like her life is so tragic. And then she says, I hate my life. And I was like, yes, I would too. Yeah. What was, um, what was your guy's favorite killer of the movie? Either human or, or zombie. 
I think I tell um, my wife was Martin getting eaten because she yeah. called him Tiger Meat. That's like she kept on referring to Martin after that was his nickname was Tiger Meat. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I know maybe it doesn't count. It was, it's a little bit different, but I loved the the vault zombie. I was they just had going trigger to say, all the... <laughs> that was my favorite too. Yeah, especially because it creates a Rorschach at the end. Well, I was going to say, someone asked um, in the comments on the vodka stream last night. They were like, "Zach, is there any sort of a pattern?" I was trying to see a pattern yeah. in the uh, in like the goo when the door separated. It looked kind of familiar, and Zach said, um, "Maybe it's." Pretty clouds. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. Um, I don't know why he said just pretty clouds. Maybe it's just you know, just him making a joke. But um, oh, no, it's, a, it's a Rorschach. Yeah, but uh, the pretty clouds thing. Uh, I think co it was coincidence, maybe. But the title sequence of the movie, um, where it says directed by Zack Snyder, it's actually framed, um, you know, in front of pretty clouds. <laughs> so it's even funnier when he says that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh -huh. Rorschach. Um, that's what I thought too. And that's my favorite kill. It's like th that scene was also funny because their reactions and the music playing was like a, you know, <laughs> comedic. Uh... Well, and that whole sequence of Vanderho just being like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> and he like struts <laughs> off. And then and he, and he stands in the elevator with his arms crossed. Mr. And then... T. Like, yeah, it was just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think I think one of my favorites was uh, Lily with Athena's head. Because first she's backing off going, don't do it. I'll blow her head yeah. off even more. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she's impaled. She's impaled with the rebar against the wall. And I just love how she just leans over, takes the head and just drops it. And not only does she drop the head. We follow the head down yeah. to watch it splat on the pavement. And there's just something that I just went, <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> and if, um, the, the, Vanderhoe was an interesting character because at the start, if you look really closely, you can see that they studied, got a major in uh, philosophy. And a lot of the lines are very like that. And I, I, I don't, I've never studied, studied it or anything like that, but I've looked at, it kind of reminded me of Rust Cole from uh, True Detective, the way he, his outlook on life, these kind of yes. lines mm. uh, stuff like that. Like, what do you think of him as a character and even this theory of a time loop that many people are thinking is, is a definite theory right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that the time loop is um, I, when Vanderhoe says it, I think he's he's um, I don't know. People are like so far down the rabbit hole on this, but I think that he's he's screwing with with Dieter. When the way that he presents it is very much like egging Dieter on because Dieter he's is like the fish out of water. Him. Yeah, exactly. Especially when it's punctuated with the explosion and everything. He's yeah, it's very much hazing hazing Dieter. But then also it it is metaphorical and it's metaphorical for what happens in the movie. I mean, there is a and it's it's a zombie movie. There's a cycle of greed and death that they are a a part of they have killed zombies um already and then they they left and on their back killing zombies again there were groups that were sent to the vault to get the money and they died and they're the newest group and then he ascend he descends into the abyss with the joseph campbell reference and then he emerges as something new and then when at the last moment when you least expect it it all starts again boom like that's that is vanderhoe's arc um, and it's also and so, to your point Stephen. it's the monomyth because the monomyth, it going back to Joseph Campbell, is a circle that yeah. what you start at home, you descend, you come back home, and technically, you're going. It's a site. It's a cycle that just repeats itself over and over again. Campbell would say it repeats yeah. itself over and over again throughout every religion and mythology in the world because it's the monomyth. But then also, as stories go on, once you do the cycle, your next story is just a variation of that cycle that continues, and so it just becomes. It is. It is the circle. It is the loop. Any diagram you see of Campbell's monomyth is just a it's that yeah. snake eating its tail thing exactly and I even uh, like... russ, russ cole says the exact same thing time is a flat circle and true detective so this reminded me so much of that yeah he doesn't really believe it but it's it's just kind of how he's how he's thinking of his life experiences. Yeah. and so yeah so i don't think there's like nothing there i think it is interesting and like the similarity of the bodies that are in the vault is is interesting but i think it's it's 
it's all intended to be way more metaphorical and uh, and philosophical um, and has more meaning to me personally. Also, I think it has a stronger impact as a as a philosophical uh, metaphorical time loop than it does as a literal like time travel mechanism. I think that that kind of actually takes away from the story once you turn it into like some sort of literal time travel happening. And also, I feel like it also is a great uh, meta commentary on genre and sci-fi if if it's not an actual time loop, but just this awesome opportunity for the character to almost speak to the audience like a th- omniscient narrator commenting metatextually on the situation that they're in and the audience just gets to kind of wink and be part of like the the elbow nudging of oh yeah we know what's going on here that's how i took it when i first saw the movie and that's what made me appreciate it as a excuse me as a meta commentary on a genre film yeah yeah, I agree, and uh, I I loved all those aspects as well, and you know, um, especially because uh, obviously this is a Zack Snyder movie, and we go looking uh, for that stuff, right? And of course, we got it, so I'm really happy with that. Um, uh, and I do think that uh, you know, um, I do think that uh, you know, Zack intentionally didn't add a lot of the um, alien stuff in this um, just like uh, I said previously because of that reason I think Um, but I do think that um, he has here enough stuff that we could theorize over and I do think the time loop is still a possibility (laughs) and I think well and I think that the interesting thing that he said also was that something he said that um, we'll find out Zeus's story in the animated series and that he went on some sort of a quest um, and that that is how this happened to him. So he was seeking something somehow, somewhere, and that resulted in a, you know, like a Venom, discovering the Venom symbiote or like drinking from the Holy Grail or something. And this is the consequence of that happening. Um but also he said that something during the zombie war happened to Vanderhoe that made him philosophical. And the fact that he said that it made him, that's part of what made him the way he is. And like, so philosophical stuck out to me because, um, I think that maybe if you're going to introduce some sort of a prophecy time loop, fourth wall awareness aspect to it, or like a, um, I think people have used the like edge of tomorrow comparison. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if you want to give that to someone like Vanderhoe, like if he had some sort of alien interaction that gives him a level of clairvoyance, Mm -hmm. that works and that's cool. But I don't think catching everybody up in a literal time loop is as interesting. But if we find out more about Vanderhoe so that we look back on this movie and it makes him giving that speech to Dieter even more ironic because he's literally living in some kind of time loop himself or has some awareness, some larger awareness as a result of whatever happened to him. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's cool. I think that's the the route that I'd be most interested in it taking along those lines yeah. um, when it comes to like time. And that would be Campbellian too, because that would be his descent into the underworld metaphorically and the ultimate boon, the elixir, the apotheosis. I mean, that would be apotheosis in, in the in the in the Campbell model that would if he he gained some sort of ability or awareness like that. That would then mean that Vanderhoe is the Campbellian hero of this story. He's the one on the journey. Yeah, it's so interesting to think about it that way. But I mean, people were saying, why didn't Vanderhoe kill himself at the end when he found out that he was bitten? I don't think he looks at zombies as monsters or as uh, the destruction of humanity. I think maybe from a philosophical stand- standpoint, he's probably thinking that it's an evolution of humanity, that these zombies can reproduce. Maybe he doesn't know that, but they can live in a community. They can, they can live like that. They don't necessarily need food as much and things like that. They can actually live within a community and actually get on, it seems like, all oh, the zombies. Do you, you think that he looks at it as an evolution? Maybe that's why he doesn't kill himself? Or do you think it just overtakes him before he can kill himself? Or what do you think his reasoning is? Well, we don't know what happens. 
I don't think we know what happens just yet as a result of that. But I thought another thing Zach pointed out that was really kind of fascinating is that most other characters, there's something else going on that with their injury, they're in a, they're in a crash or they get shot or their bite is more severe and they're bleeding out and that maybe they would have died even if they didn't become a zombie. And so whatever it is that's happening um, Vanderho is not dying and becoming a zombie. He's just becoming a zombie while he's alive because his wound is so minor and he didn't have any other injuries to speak of. And he's a big, healthy, strong dude. And something else maybe happened to him. And he was irradiated, <laughs> at least lightly, right? Yeah. And so there's something about his scenario that, like, the my kind of favorite theory, I keep on calling him, like, the Daywalker zombie. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's a very cool setup for like a blade style, give him all of Zeus's powers, but let him keep at least most of his mind or have him struggle with the duality. Another Cambellian thing, right? Mm -hmm. About give him the struggle of like the, the taste for the flesh or whatever the craving. Um, and then I don't know, you could go a lot of different ways, but like, I'd love to like do that to him. He's got the money, have him build a team of alphas in mexico city don't have a full-on outbreak like have him build this team and then he tracks down what happened what was the government doing what was Bly doing let's have him go infiltrate area 51 as like a as like a, a spy super zombie <laughs> right like like that's way cooler to me than like another full-blown zombie apocalypse take and uh I, I, um you're kind of yeah. you're, you're, you're kind of saying that like as humans, we have evolved over time. Why can't zombies evolve? Is that what you're kind of saying as well? Yeah, that's that's pretty. A awesome. little bit, but also that's, he's think about. the way that he's getting his powers are like it took so much longer for him to change that I don't think it's I think it's reasonable story wise to to say like well no he's not he's not a mindless you know like Zeus had a mind but also he was he was violent and and maybe lost a lot of his mind so like but why can't we say that like. Vanderhoe is the next step and he and he maintains more of his consciousness and he has more of a morality yeah. about him and he keeps that philosophical <laughs> world awareness about him um that can make him a really um much more interesting and possibly more dangerous character if you give him the power but don't give him the weakness um yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting because we, we don't we don't know what happened to Zeus before the the the, the vault got opened on the road when the crash happened like we don't know if what way he was experimented on we don't know how he got the virus. That probably could have altered how he acted then as Zeus when he got out and started overtaking Las Vegas. That's a good point. So Vanderro has a different perspective as well, like more aware. So I think that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Stephen, um, I think you have to go, right? Yeah, I do. All right. Then you, All right. we can wrap things up here with you. Uh, Scott, you can stay. Um, I, I probably need to head out myself, but right. I can kind of r kind of wrap things up here. All right, that's good for us then, because I don't have to change the layout again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, we'll we'll definitely uh, talk more about Army of the Dead um, next week, I think, or midweek. We'll plan another show where it will be Army spoiler discussion specifically. And uh, we'll get into uh, much more, um, you know, with that. Uh, after multiple viewings myself again, <laughs> because I still have only seen it twice. And I want to see it more times. Um, Those are rookie numbers. We have to get them up, Casey. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, Zach needs the sequel. And we need the sequel. So, And it was number one worldwide in every Netflix, every country. And that was amazing. So, yeah. Um, Let's wrap it up here then. Um, thanks, thanks guys for, yeah. for coming by. Appreciate it. Our first ever guests on Real Talk Live. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, first ever guests. And that's amazing that, uh, you know, uh, everything went smoothly. <laughs> but yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but everyone, I want to thank everyone for watching as well. Just give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the channel, new channel kind of layout for real talk live that we're excited about and you can also follow the social medias real talk live where we will all the latest breaking news we'll post it on instagram and on twitter and you can find out when we're going live as